really personally that effect. Um, great, so everyone is here, perfect. So we'll stop um, along. If you have any questions, please, as Crystal mentioned, just put them in the chat box. Um, I'll be watching it, Crystal will be watching it, so we'll be able to answer your questions immediately. There's no dumb questions. Uh, we'll try to repeat everything, but if you fall behind, just let us know and we'll we'll try to go back to, to the other step. Um, so we are from Immigrant Food. I am Tia Ivanovich and I am Mille Montezuma. I'm uh, from Venezuela. Yep, and I'm from Belgium. So no arepas in Belgium, but I will be uh, <laughs> learning alongside you to make arepas with Mille. So um, I'll be asking some of the questions that you might be wondering as you're cooking along. Um, for those of you don't, who don't know, Immigrant Food is a cause casual restaurant. Um, and what that means is that we celebrate the contributions of immigrants uh, to America, the gastronomic contributions, through our delicious menu that's, that's all fusion. Um, and you can see that we're inside the restaurant, so there's some background noise, so I do want to apologize for that, but that's what it is. Um, but we also partner with five local NGOs. So we work with five local amazing immigrant service NGOs here in the DC area. We're located in Washington DC, right next to the White House. And that was intentional uh, because we opened in 2019 and the goal was to, um, to really show that we are here to celebrate immigrants. And I'll be talking a little bit more about immigrant food as we go along. Um, but I just wanted to introduce Mila and myself very quickly. Uh, so I'm Taya. Um, I am the communications director um, here at Immigrant Food uh, and the director of outreach. So I'm also working with the NGOs. And this is our chef, Mili Montezuma. Hi, guys. So <laughs> welcome to our class. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a little bit of Arepas 101. <laughs> so what do you need to start? You will need a bowl, something like this. So you go prepare that right now so that you have it ready. Yes, you will need to preheat your oven in 500 Fahrenheit. That is very important. You will need a pan. And your ingredients that we are using are in a pan that is a corn flour. This, so, this is, I'm going to uh, give you guys the recipe. This is three quarters of a cup of arena pan. And this is a cup of water okay, with a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so, and you can see in the, in the screen that we have all the food, we have our ingredients, but that doesn't say that you have to have same ingredients. You can uh, filter the arepa with whatever you want. Okay. So we'll just repeat that very quickly. Um, so right now to start off, as we're starting off the class, if you can prepare in your kitchen, if you're following along with us, and if you're not, as Crystal mentioned, um, we'll be recording this. So you can also go back and, and watch it again. Um, so one big sort of cup um, that you can work with, that's where you're going to be mixing your, your, dough. your, your dough, exactly. Yeah. And so then Mila, you need- So there, for the recipe, I'm going to say again, we need uh, three quarters of a cup of arena pan, that is corn flour, corn flour, a cup of water, yep. and a teaspoon of salt. You will also need to preheat your oven uh, 500 Fahrenheit, and you will need a pan. Perfect. And so we'll be using both the stove top and, and the oven. And the oven, exactly. Yeah, so right. All right, great. As everyone, everyone's along with that, um, we just want to make sure that you don't, because if we start and then you have to get, jump back in, it's always a, a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. Uh, does it need to be an oven safe pan? No, you can put it like uh, directly uh, to the oven without the pan. Yeah, you so can you use uh, the arepas. sheets or like the arepas uh, like directly to the oven. Perfect. Um, yep, the restaurant, I'm sorry, we're looking at the chat right now and while you guys get settled in, the restaurant is still open. If you're in the DC area, we welcome you here. Um, we are open Tuesdays through Sundays and we're starting brunch. So we're very excited about that. And I'll actually be telling you a little bit more about it while we start cooking. So I think, um, I think we're ready to start. Right? Yes, we're ready so. to start. So for me, oh, you know what we forgot? Yes. If you have a mimosa, we're starting with mimosas. Yes. It's Saturday afternoon. I think we can have a glass. So <laughs> cheers, cheers guys. guys. Oh, I see I someone know. going. Kyla, more? That's great. Cheers to you. <laughs> Perfect. Christy, we see you. Great. great. <laughs> Love it. Perfect. So to start, for me, I like first to put the water. Some people put first the, the flour and then the water, but I, I like do it this way. It's easier for me to mix the dough. So we so just we put in all the, the entire cup of water. The cup of water and the teaspoon of salt that we already put in the water are in here in our bowl right now. Okay. 
So then with our flour, we're going to start to add like slowly the flour and we're going to do this movement, like something like this, like you're, yeah, like you're mixing. Yeah, so, so slowly, slowly add as we're mixing, right? As we're mixing, exactly. Okay, so watch Mile, don't watch me because she's the pro. <laughs> you're gonna learn it wrong if you learn from me. <laughs> All right, so we're mixing, and then so the teaspoon of salt could be in the water or could be in, in the, the corn flour in the, in right the corn away. Flour, yeah. For us, we already mix it in the corn flour as we put it in. So, uh, and then you will flour. start to make this movement, like this. Like, you okay, will feel so. like your dough is a little bit watery, but it's fine. You just you keep need to, mixing. Yeah, keep mixing. Did you see mine is already a little bit better? All right, so we just keep mixing. This is really fun because it's like Play-Doh, right? Yes, that's um, great. So <laughs> look, if you can see my bowl in here, mine already is not stick at the bowl. So it's kind it's not of- not watery, so you yeah, just keep going. Yeah, it's kind of ready, yeah. So, so just keep going. And so when do we know it's ready, Mille? When you're, when it's not stick in your in your bowl. So when I nothing's just, sticking in your bowl, yeah, you know it's not ready. something like you you are going to overweigh the. There. You can't overdo it, right? No, no, okay. no, no, no. Okay, so we just keep so, going. Perfect. Okay, so we know when it's ready when there's nothing sticking to your bowl, and you can really. Oh, this is really fun. I think it's really fun to play it too with your kids or right. Yes, yeah, your kids is, is, is like super fun to do yeah. with your kids. Oh, that's really fun. So if you look. Mine is already not a stick at all in my bowl. Perfect. So with this recipe, you will get two arepas. Right. Or you can do more if you if want, you, right? If, yeah. But I, I mean, for the size that I always do it, you can have two. Or if you want to do it a little bit smaller, you can do three. Okay. So this is what we have right now. It's a, it's a ball of dough. Um, it's not dry. It's a, it's a little bit watery, but it's not it's super not, watery, no, no, right? No. It's like basically. Right yeah. Oh yes, cheers everybody. That looks great. Uh, Ron, that looks great. Yeah, that is perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Great. Great. Is everyone following? Oh, yeah. oh, it's like Rebecca, Rebecca, yours looks good yeah. too. Oxed, I don't know your name, it looks great. Yes, that is that is ready. Perfect. So once we have that, if you are also, if you are not using the same flour that we are using, that the brand is Arina Pan, you might uh, gonna need more flour or more water. I'm not okay. sure. This recipe is for that brand. Okay. And so the brand that we use, Mila, where can we find that in supermarkets? Uh, well, sometimes you can find it in Giant and Whole Foods and also in the Latin supermarkets. Okay. And so the brand is Arina, Arina Pan. Pan. Yes. Okay. So now that we have our dough ready, let's preheat our pan. So we're preheating yeah, our stove well, top. Yes, like medium heat. Medium heat. Okay, perfect. Um, so again, your oven should be already preheating at 500 Fahrenheit. So yes. if you haven't done that, do it now. And then now you can also preheat your stove top. I was able to find pan at Giant in Maryland. Okay, great. great. Perfect. Yes. perfect. Awesome. Great, okay. So when we have the bowl, another tip that I always use that I get a little bit more uh, extra water to wet my hands and do the shape of the dough. That's a great tip. Yeah, so if you have a little bit extra water, you can just keep it next to you. Um, and it's gonna get some water. <laughs> Perfect. That looks great, Amy. That looks good. Yeah, you just want a little bowl because now we're gonna make start making the shape. So what we wanna do is you take the entire bowl of flour that you have and you divide it into two. Um, two equal halves, and you know if you're doing it with someone, you want to give them the smaller half so you have yeah, the bigger arepa. Yeah, yeah, obviously, exactly. that's, just, <laughs> that's just common knowledge. Right? Um, perfect. Oh, great, guys! Yours look, yours look great, Elaine. It looks great. Oh, thank you for putting your name, so I can call you by your name. That's okay, <laughs> love it. Okay, what do we okay. do next? So we divide our our dough, and yep. then, like I say, I wait a little bit with my hands, and I start to make like a bowl, like something like this. And so you do, you have a specific way to do it. Yes, right? I'm showing it like here and just making like a bowl with both of my hands. So you're gonna go in two directions? Yeah. Yeah? You go. <laughs> <laughs> this is an exercise of uh, coordination here. That's and great. then I start to wait, 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 I don't think we're there yet, hang on. So once, when are we ready to tap? Oh my gosh. When you have like a bowl, like a bowl. Okay. This circular bowl. Okay. And then we start tapping it. One, we one got cocker brand in Atlanta and it's super watery. You might need more flour. 
That is uh, Christy. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So we go from one hand yeah, to the next. Yeah. Tapping. Just tapping, like something like that. I mean, guys, yeah. the, the shape don't have to be perfect. <laughs> You're gonna hate well, it anyway. She'll make fun of. She always makes fun of my shape. So <laughs> I think it does have to be perfect. Oh, wow. And then, how big does the shape have to be? Like, how thick is your? So, the thickness or the arepa is depend on uh, every people. I like chewy uh, chocolate cookies, so I like thick arepas. If you like more thin chocolate cookies that is like more crispier, you will like like do it thinner. But you think I, I think I'm the exception because I like thin chocolate chip cookies, but I like thicker arepas. I love thicker arepas <laughs> because I love the inside of the arepas. Okay. Me too. Almost another cup until it gets to the right texture. Okay, great. Okay. So yeah, that depends on the flour you use, right? So oh, this is my the, okay. yours is so perfect. Hang on. I'm still not there. Okay. So I want it to be in a perfect circle. Oh my god. I do show okay. it like that. Okay, see, so mine is not perfect. That's okay. So if it's not perfect, it's still gonna taste very good. <laughs> um, so that's and fine. We could make this one again. So make another one. Are oh, you making it? Oh no, you're making another one. Yeah. And so when you grew up, Mili, in uh, in Venezuela, how how soon? Like, when did you make your first arepa? Since I was a child, because I was like so always in home. Like my when my mom and my dad was cooking, they give me just like a little bit of dough between they are doing the like the real arepas <laughs> and I was making my own arepas pretending and doing like shapes arepas like Mickey arepas heart shaped arepas <laughs> or whatever I can do with the dough I love that chef we got some questions in the chat someone's asking um if there should be a measurement in the height of the arepa um for a oh. thicker one and whether or not we should have any oil in the pan right now yeah perfect so in terms of the height or the thickness I think that's yeah, it's a kind of what, like I say, what do you like? You like more like super thick, uh, um, chewy cookies or like thin and, and like super crispy. Or something. Okay, great. Any and should there be the oil? Yes. Yeah. Any yeah, yeah, oil on the pan? Yes. I'm going to add a little bit of the spray oil. We have spray oil, but if you don't have spray oil, you can just dab a napkin um, yeah. and just dab it on your on your pan, on your pan. or and add a little bit of oil because the oil is for what? Just to not let it stick, right? Yeah, it's just for not to stick. So, okay. and then the last question is: um, they have extra dough that they're going to be using. Should they cook it all now, or can they refrigerate it and make it fresh later? Yeah, they can refrigerate it. They just need to like uh, close very well the container that uh, where they are saving the dough. You can okay. eat it for tomorrow or breakfast. My favorite time to eat arepas. <laughs> another question, Mila, is when do you eat arepas? I mean, we eat it the whole day, but my favorite favorite is like do it on like on breakfast because I can do like eggs or like avocado and a lot of cheese. A lot of cheese. Yeah. I think cheese cheese is really the key uh, oh, the key right. filling, right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So once so, we have our shape, I think we're ready yeah. to move it to the stove top. Yes. Right? Perfect. Is it yours? Well, no, it's don't look at mine. <laughs> Um, okay, it's not as perfect, but perfect. Okay. Oh my god, yours is so nice. Oh, then she's gonna make fun of me later. Like, oh, this is this a square arepa? It's like kind of a square. <laughs> the taste is the same. <laughs> Look, she's doing mine over. I need to show that. At least you don't have a chef who does yours over. So. We're making a good, okay, the same question. I don't think perfect. I'm perfect. Do you want to show us your shape, guys? How does your arepa look? Oh, that looks good, Christy. Oh, see, see. Good job. Yeah. I look Abby. Um, oh, Abby. Everyone is doing a great, great oh, job. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ron looks good, too. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Look, Kyle, Kyla? Yeah, Kyla. Yeah, yeah. Amy looks great. Ah, okay. Rebecca, yep. I can see it. That looks great. Everyone is so good cool job. here. I think you guys know already how to do it. You're lying. You're cheating. Me, yeah. You're cheating. Yeah, you're lying. <laughs> And then we just place it on yeah, top, right? Yeah, just place it on the in your stove, and that's it. So again, just a little bit of oil at the bottom, not too much. It's just to not let it stick. And in terms of what type of oil, um, any any type, right? Any type of oil. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to have Chef Mila help me with mine. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you want to, Christy. I'm telling you, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. <laughs> So now that you have your arepas working on the stove, your arepa is not going not to need to a lot of cooking in the stove. It's just like until you get it like something like this, something like you can like just like to seal it because then we're going to finish the cooking in the oven. Okay. This is one that we already passed by the pan. 
If the arepa is cracking, should we add more water? Yes, you should add a little bit more water. And okay. work a little bit more on your dough. Yep, so keep massaging yeah. it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, depending on where you guys are, so as Milia was just saying, I'm just gonna repeat it. Um, so do, when do you know when to turn your arepa? Yeah, because you will have to already turn it. By the I'll do this yeah. one, sorry. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna look something like this. I'm showing it on the, on the small screen. Here it is again. So a little bit of brown, doesn't have to be completely even, but when one side looks like this, you can turn it around. On what temperature should the pan be on? Like medium heat, you see? I'm like turning this one right now. Okay, she's turning it right now. This oh my God, side you is burning yourself? What? I mean, you're holding it. Oh, um, it's fine. Okay, <laughs> I'm used to this. <laughs> this is a good moment for me to take another sip of my mimosa. Yeah, don't forget your hands, guys. Yeah, it's very important cooking, no? Yeah, it's very important. I mean, you don't do it every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not every day. Just, you know, special dishes. Right. What temperature? Oh, okay. Should be yeah, fine. so then, medium. Yeah, medium, medium heat. And you have to have your oven, like I said before, 500 Fahrenheit. So and that then, should already be preheating right yes, now. Yes, preheating right now. When we finish with our arepas, we're going to place it at the oven. Okay, perfect. So as the arepas are cooking, maybe we can chat about the fillings. So yes. as you can see from our little screen here, we have a lot of fillings here. But yes, but this is like like kind of traditional arepas, but everybody really eat it with whatever you have at home because it's not like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to make arepas and I need to prep all my things. Everybody eat like, it's like a sandwich. You do a sandwich with whatever you have at home. If you have ham, if you have cheese, you put whatever inside not like a super special dish that you need to make like exactly. What's your favorite filling? Oh, oh the, the one that I made for you one time with <laughs> mortadella and burrata. Mm, my favorite. Okay, right. But yeah. cheese seems to be a requirement. Cheese needs to be a requirement. But if you're vegan, what do you think we can it's substitute vegan cheese? with? Vegan cheese? That's good. That's a, that's, a good, that's a good point. Yeah. Great. I see people doing great. Kyla, yours looks great. So you can tap it between the hands. Yep, that looks great, guys. Awesome. Um, so, how far along are we? Read us in the chat. Are you in the pan? Are you ready to turn your arepa? Let us know where you are so that we know when we can move on with um, with moving it to the oven. So, this uh, we have here for we are going to make two arepas: one vegetarian and one with chicken. So, we have for the vegetarian we have black beans, we have plantains. Right, and just I'm just reading so what people are saying not ready to turn yet. Okay, okay. But you can also increase the heat just a little bit, right? Yeah, it depends yeah, so on your oven. Then it's a pan your and your stove top and in your pan because some pans are like more thicker and takes like more time to get uh, heat. So, how did you cook the plantains? <laughs> so, <laughs> Good question. Here we just have an oven. We don't have like a real kitchen. The only thing that we have is something like this that is an electric kitchen. So I do it in the oven. I put this one on 500, like for 10 minutes. 500 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. And do you soak them in something? Do you add like seasoning? No, because uh, actually now you can find like plantains are ready like this. It's hard to buy like uh, fresh plantains because you have to wait a lot to get it ready, to get right. like ripe, ripe. So you can find it now frozen in the, the freeze section and the, maybe in the Latin section they have it. And so tell me, Mila, you really like the uh, the taste of sweet and then savory, right? Is that a, a key thing in Venezuelan cuisine? So in Venezuelan cuisine, it's like super key. Almost all dishes have like something sweet and something sour. Also, in uh, we add a little bit of uh, cane sugar in the in the black beans. Ah, okay. So to give that, of... that, yeah, to give that flavor. Perfect. So we are we mix a lot of that. Great. And if um, someone's asking for doing chicken, should we cook the chicken already? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you should yeah. have your chicken ready. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the, on the oven, hot, right? yeah, in the oven is going to be like just like six minutes. Yeah. So you should put your chicken. Perfect. Uh, so, so you should Christy, have your. Yeah, um, Christy's cooking the chicken right now. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. So you should have just all your um your, your fillings ready. Yeah, and, you should yeah, have your fillings perfect. ready at this point. And I think we also shared um shared something about the sauce, right? Yes. So we have a special sauce. Yeah, we are, we <laughs> use a cilantro and garlic sauce, but I think we send the rest the did, ingredients yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. So perfect. Okay. But you can use any sauce that you want, or like a spicy sauce if you like a spicy food. That would be great too. Perfect. Didn't get the sauce recipe. Okay, well, I think we'll, um, I think Crystal will share it um, afterwards and, and we'll make sure that you get it. Um, 
So we have a couple of suggestions of sauces. I think you can really do whatever, yeah, right? You can do whatever you want. Or maybe an alioli or whatever you you really have in your house. Like I say, it's not like a dish that you need to prep like a day before to do it. It's like most that you fill it with whatever you have at home at that moment. We didn't share um, the full recipe because it was just the ingredients, but Chef, if you'd like to talk some folks through in case they do want to try to make this recipe, I dropped the ingredients into the chat so you guys can see that it requires blanched garlic, blanched cilantro, olive oil, vinegar, and salt. Yes, uh, so the things like that recipe is kind of hard because you have to blanch the garlic and the cilantro and for blanched garlic you have to put the garlic with uh, cold water and then boil it and then take the water and then boil it again like at least like eight times to do that. I do it because it's like for a restaurant, <laughs> but like home wise you can use like regular garlic, the same with the cilantro. And instead of the oil and the vinegar, I will use like uh, mayonnaise because it's easier for any blenders. We have like a restaurant blender here and that is we can do the, the oil and the vinegar and do like something like that. Okay. But we'll, you can do like an aioli with garlic and cilantro, it will be fine too. Okay, perfect. So just wanna make sure that everyone's on the on the pan is doing okay. Yeah, we so are, it looks something kind of like this. Yeah, this one um, is the one that we took out of the okay. pan right now. Perfect. So it should be something like yeah. this. Like so this. brown, um, if it's brown, golden brown, it's yes. gonna have to be dark brown. If you have that, you are ready to move to the oven. So um, your oven should be now preheated for 500 Fahrenheit. And um, how should we move the arepas? How should we place them in the oven? If you want, you can put it in a, in a tray or you can put it directly to the tray that the oven have. It doesn't matter. Okay. So you, you can... don't have to turn it inside of the of the oven. Just put it in because the oven works like 360. You don't need to turn it. So you won't need to turn the arepa inside yes. the oven, just on the stove. Just on the stove. Perfect. So if you're ready to do that, just pop it in the oven. It's going to be there for six minutes. Perfect. Plantain, how to cook? Uh, the plantains, <laughs> I cook it like five, 500 for 10 minutes. And I get some of it. Like. Yeah. So you, uh, you also cook it in the oven, right? Yeah, I cook it in the oven. You can see it here. Perfect. So that's the plantain. So that's what we'll be using. And for the um, pan, yes, we put the spray oil, but if you don't have a spray oil, you can wet a napkin or something like that and just like that put a little bit. Yeah, put no. a little bit in your in your Jedi is just the oil is just used. it's just a non-stick, not like to deep fry the arepas. Right. So okay. you are fine. Because deep frying arepas is uh is a different thing, but we love <laughs> that's right. Fry arepas are great, but I don't so like to tell me deep deep fry. About, about arepas and you have you have Venezuelan arepas, which we're making today, but you have Colombian arepas. Yes, Colombian arepas. How are those different, really? <laughs> are completely different in the dough. The, uh, the dough that they use, I think the flour, they use a, a different one, and they also add cheese and butter to the dough. Okay. So are, are completely different. But I think every Latin American uh, country have like their arepa. Like El Salvador have the pupusas, uh, Colombians have the Colombian arepas. Right, right. <laughs> so but we uh, we think the Venezuelan arepas are the best so arepas. Much so <laughs> that's what we're teaching you today. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. And um, I also wanted to ask you: you eat your arepas in restaurants, or do you eat it sort of? Is it street food? Like what type of food? It's is kind it? of a like yes, like a street food, mm -hmm. like a restaurant. I mean, everybody's like very proud of like our culture. So now they are doing like in every everywhere, like in fancy restaurants or like in street food, like a huge cherry bus, like in food trucks. So. <laughs> and also the other thing that we love is like eat uh, empanadas. That is same dough, but it's fried and it's already pre-filled. Yeah, that's your favorite, right? That's my favorite, <laughs> so my favorite. <laughs> Maybe fried, that could be so. a next class. Um, great guys, so can you just write us in the chat where you are, are you, is your arepa in the oven or is it still on the stove top? Just want to make sure that And I don't are, see the drinks. Yeah, I don't see the drinks either. People have stopped drinking. <laughs> oven, perfect. Oven. Waiting to brown on stove top. Okay. So if it's again, if it's not working, you can also increase your stove top a bit. Just make sure you're watching it. Um, oven, perfect. Stove top. Okay, great. Great. So great, I think it's great. six minutes in the oven um, and you can watch it obviously, right? But um, I think we'll just to make sure we're well, going to keep going again. This will be recorded so you can always go back and recheck and um, just and just I, I'm going to repeat the recipe for you guys to have a, uh, like for later. Maybe you want to do breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's three quarters of a cup of the flour, 
one cup of uh, water and a teaspoon of salt. That's all you need. And so that's all you need. And we want to use harina pan is the ideal. Want, yeah, the ideal, I mean, Flour. this recipe is for, yeah, for harina pan. And we can find that where? In giant Whole Foods and in Latin supermarkets. Perfect. Ron is a size salam. Oh, great. Are we all size salams? So I'm a size salam. I'm um, Polonia 2015 and DC 2016. Um, so it's it's really great to be here. Mila is, is not a size salam, otherwise I know, I her know. cooking. I think we didn't really learn have a lot of cooking classes at size. So <laughs> um, <laughs> perfect, great. But they are was they was doing it great. I think they took that class that you did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you guys have all taken the the cooking classes. Um, Amazon has any too. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can find it on Amazon. I I never got it from that. I have to try to buy it from it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some people crashing. They're not Hopkins alum. That's great too. Um, undergrad and size, perfect. Great. Yeah. Okay. Great. There's some uh, some Johns Hopkins, Bloomberg Public Health. That's great. Um, that's awesome. It's just so nice to be to be reconnected. So um, immigrant food was founded by two Sai Salams, actually. Um, so my colleague, Peter Schechter, is also a Sai Salam um, and a Johns Hopkins undergrad alum as well. Um, and he's a little bit older than me, but um, we found we actually met at an alumni event. So that's, that's why I keep going to alumni events. And hopefully, once the pandemic is over, we can go to more events um, and meet more Sai Sir Bloomberg. That's great. But we need to tell them about our brunch. Yes, we wanted to share with you that we're starting brunch. We're very excited at Immigrant Food. So if you're in DC or if you're traveling to DC at some point, um, we're going to be doing brunch on Saturdays and Sundays starting Easter weekend. So April 3rd and 4th is our first weekend doing brunch. Um, and Mile, can you share with us what is going to be on the menu? So we'll have like <laughs> like our concept is we arepas. Have, yeah, we have arepas, <laughs> where it's like fusion. We are not going to have arepas like now, like traditionals, but we will have a shakshuka with arepas. Oh, yeah. And we have a Canadian poutine, we will have a, a well, mese trio, we have yeah. hummus, uh, mohammed pineapple pancakes, pina colada, pineapple 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 that's yeah. what I'm really excited about. Um, yeah, so actually, it's actually the way that yeah. it yes. It really is. Mm -hmm. I was lucky because I've been testing them, we've been testing it out for a couple of weeks and I've been having our brunch like every other day. And I can really feel it, but it's really delicious. <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys, again, I would love to see you. And please, if you come ask for us, we would love to come say hi. We always love meeting uh, people that we do these. Um, these we are also trying to. our new mimosa. Uh, yes, that's what we're doing this. We're just trying, trying and testing it's, it's out. Research. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So if you want to come, make sure you make a reservation. Um, we're starting to take reservations just for brunch. For everything else, you can just walk in, but for brunch, you need a reservation. Um, if you go to our website, immigrantfood.com, you'll be able to make the reservation um, through our partner website on talk. Uh, do you have outdoor seating? Yes, we do. And we actually have a revamped patio, um, which is really, really nice. We got some new planters and flowers and things like that. So it's really nice. Um, the patio is so, so yeah. beautiful. We have carpets. Yesterday we got carpets. <laughs> um, yeah, so we would love we would love to see you. Um, also, if you don't follow us on social media, please do. Also, We're, if you guys take pictures, uh, tag us on yes. social media. Yes, absolutely. Tonight, like today, if you're taking pictures, Please tag us. So we're just at Immigrant Food on Instagram, at Immigrant Food DC. Abby looks great. Abby, that looks amazing. Oh, that's great. Perfect. Yeah. So make sure we're connected on, on social media as well. Perfect. So I think um, we're slowly like starting to get out of the oven. If you're if your arepa is in the oven. Yes, that um, one is ready. Ron. Oh, yes. Uh, Ron, that yeah. looks great. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, show us your arepa. We want to, we're happy to, to tell you how it looks. You guys are really pros. I mean, yes. it's, it's yes. really a class I didn't take at SICE or um, Johns Hopkins. Yeah, I, so, something happened. I missed out. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. OK, great. So I think now we can start talking about uh, actually filling the arepa. Yay. So this is what an arepa should look like yes. once it's out of the oven. So Ron, yours was perfect. So, yeah, because um, this one is like kind of more like like higher, like something like risen a bit. Yeah, right? risen a bit, and it's like. So what's the difference? Why do we do both stove top I just, and I oven? want to show the difference. Look this one. Look completely different. This one is is like gold, more golden brown than the other one. Look. And it's also hard, right? It's so harder on than the, This one is still soft. 
the okay. one that is not in the what's so not if you like hold your arepa and kind of press on it you can you can hear that it's a little bit hard on the sides um wow this is so delicious and it smells so good <laughs> i can't wait <laughs> so you want it hard yes not like completely hard because <laughs> not in the middle not in the middle it's just like yes yeah, just like in the corners yes yeah just a little bit i mean when i say hard i don't mean like super like, hard right yeah, I mean, not like crispy little... hard but like more harder than the one that you put before right 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 perfect okay great well i'm excited i'm so this is my favorite part is actually eating the arepa uh, <laughs> okay so, so we have gonna, these I'm little get things closer oh, to the camera. um we just i just want to explain these uh these little these little bags that we have so immigrant food often does these arepa nights where you can actually follow along but you can also order kits from us directly um, so once we send you the kit, you get your fillings and your arepa ingredients and this little bag with you. And this is honestly proven to be so useful um, because when you fill it, it, the filling won't go through. So it's amazing. Uh, yes, we'll talk about the toppings in, in a second. That's what I'm excited about. Um, so, great. but yeah, this is mostly yeah, just to hold them. You can use a napkin too. <laughs> yeah, you can use just a napkin to hold your arepa. Yes. Um, is it supposed to sound hollow when you tap it? Yes. Yes. yes that's yes. it. That's it. Do we flip it in the oven? No, no. You don't need to flip it because the oven works like 360, just so you don't need to flip it. Perfect. So I'm going to open this one so you guys can see it. So yeah. Once it's done in the oven, you're ready to take it out. Yes. And now you're cutting the arepa. Yeah. Very we are important. just going to cut it like just in the middle. And we are not going the all the over. way. We are just going to open like halfway, like a little flap. Yes. You're just you opening see? a flap. Yeah. Can, can everyone see it? I'm going you to take it from the it. from the. Yeah. See. It's, it's close to the side, but open like here. So, so it's, it's a little like, flap. Yes. I'm holding okay. it like here, but this. <laughs> Ron, what does your flap look like? <laughs> Perfect. Oh, that's oh, good. Yeah. It's so hot. It's amazing. <laughs> like a clamshell. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Perfect. Love so that. So now we are going to fill first the, our vegetarian arepa. So talk to us about the fillings. So there's also when you have that this many fillings, do you have an order too, right? And yes. Like I'll, I try to kind of order the fillings because I want to fill like all the flavors in every bite. So I always try to start if you have like avocado or something that you want to like a green cheese or butter or whatever you want to put. And then I put like tomatoes, this one. So you can really put whatever you want in the arepa, right? Yeah, like avocado put, is good. Yeah, avocado is yeah. great. Great. So I always put like tomatoes and then I'm going to put our plantains. Right. Plantains are really popular in the arepas, no? Yes. Yeah. Because, like I say, in our culture, it's like super popular, like the the sweet and the sour together, and the salty. Sorry. So then the I'm, I'm going to put the beans. Wow, that's good. I think uh, so. We're going to show you two types of arepas: a, a vegetarian version, which is what we're making now, and then um, also a chicken version. This so is how it goes. So you have a moment. sense of what you can put in there. And then we have some greens. Eh? And then I'm going to put some greens to be trying to be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's going to save us. <laughs> and then a little bit of cheese on top. Oh, and what kind of cheese is that? This is cottage cheese. So oh. it's like a salty, it's uh, white, like a salty, salty white cheese. So you could, could you use like feta, for example? You can use feta, yeah. Okay. So this is how it looks. And I'm going to put a little bit of the sauce. So again, what kind of sauce is that? Oops. Cilantro sauce, okay. cilantro and garlic sauce. <laughs> and this is how it looks. Very, oh, that looks so good. Yummy. Um, so that's our vegetarian arepa. So I mean, what are some things, for example, that people can have laying around in their house that they can use as, uh, as fillers? Well, like I say, uh, you can use whatever you have, but maybe you have like chicken or beef, or you have like, like I say, like a spicy sauce, tomatoes, cheese, I know that you might not have black beans or plantains, but that doesn't matter. Like I say, it's not like a specific recipe. Sometimes when I am like kind of lazy, I just do my arepa and I put ham and cheese yeah. because I don't want to do anything else. That's good. Simple arepa. That's Simple good arepa, yeah. Perfect. Or maybe you can put, well, that is more for like breakfast, but you can put an egg inside too. Oh, that's, that's yeah. great. That's a great idea. Um, what is everyone else, like what is, what are people putting in their, in their, in their fillings? Write us in the chat. 
Um, oh my God, is that, are those eggs, Christy? What are you making no, in the pan? No, she's making chicken. Oh, you're making chicken, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Portobello mushroom. Oh yeah, that is that's a good, good idea. idea too. That's a great idea. Oh, that sounds yummy. Um, chicken and we bought Maduro's. Yeah, plantains, yes, yeah. great. Perfect. Perfect, that's great. And now so, we're gonna show. Yeah, we are going to fill the other one, the second one. So I'm going to repeat the starting part. Avocado. Great. So we push a little bit on the middle and then we open halfway. Uh -huh. So halfway, because otherwise it falls through, right? Yes, yeah. it falls through and yeah, we don't, it's a mess. We don't yeah. want that. <laughs> Beans, tomatoes, cheese, and lettuce. Yeah, great. That's, that's basically what we yeah, have. Yeah, that's basically what we have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, perfect. And so the chicken that you, the pulled chicken is yes. pretty complicated, right? The make. pulled chicken, you just need to do, yeah, like boil your chicken or steam your chicken, like pull it. And then you, I'll do like a sofrito with onions, peppers, garlic and then i at the end i add like uh spicy sauce like a ají amarillo sauce or something like that and then cilantro to finish perfect perfect that's great so as we're finishing i just also want to share one more time that if you are in the dc area or you're visiting please come see us at immigrant food so we're located at 1701 pennsylvania avenue and actually when you're sitting on our patio you can see the white house um so it's um it's a great location if you're just walking around downtown and, and you want to come by for um, some drinks or salads or bowls um as i mentioned we we um combine and we fuse all different immigrant recipes from around the world um and it's like really cool different fusions of like mexican and indian food or just so many different kinds um but we also partner with um with five local ngos and so how we partner with them is actually we donate parts of our space to them so this is actually where we are right now we donate to them for like volunteering classes or english classes or citizenship lessons um but you also as a customer can engage and so when you come in you'll see we have an engagement menu and you can select how you want to to engage with them whether it's volunteering or donating or whatever so come see us and come say hi to Mila and i perfect oh my god yeah, i just showed so them i'm so excited to eat it Should yeah show in the one i'll show so this, this one. Oh wow this is our chicken arepa that i'm holding and you're holding the vegetarian arepa yes wow that's delicious show us your arepa guys how does yours they, look i think they oh, eat it right ron ate this i think yeah, ron, ron ate this, ate this. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry <Not> ron. <laughs> don't worry <laughs> yeah, he's done he's, he's done, done. <laughs> oh my god that looks good rebecca, rebecca yeah wow that looks great Oh, that looks really, really I'm good. I'm telling you, I didn't think Elaine, what does your look like? I want to call you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That looks great. Great. You did a great job, guys. Yeah, you all did a great job. This is, um, please take pictures. And if you post them, tag us. We want to see you. This is our favorite part is seeing your arepas um, and how you've done them. So we definitely want to do that. Um, perfect. Yeah. Well, please, if you have any questions, we want to now open it up for questions. You can write your questions in the chat or you can if you want to say them and we can we can chat about it please unmute yourself and, and share yeah i'm gonna go ahead and pull you guys off a of spotlight so that we can kind of see everybody a little bit easier um and then we can go ahead and open up for some questions like they just shared Bobby, my arepa was a little sticky when i cut it open putting it in the oven a little longer yeah maybe okay a couple minutes or yeah yeah I mean, guys, it's not going to be raw because that flour is already pre-cooked corn flour, so it's fine. <laughs> Chefs, um, Nikki's asking for the order of ingredients again. In the once you go to stuff. Can you? Okay. So, like I say, I like to layer the arepa to fill all the flavors uh, in my arepa. So, I always start to something like uh, to put like cream cheese or or butter or avocado if you are have like guacamole or something like that. And then I add, uh, I put in this one tomatoes and then plantains and then the chicken and then the cheese. And you can see it. Right. I'm going to put it in the oven. It's just closer. And as a question was, um, should the fresh plantains be seasoned before or after cooking? I actually, if they are like super ripe, I don't put anything on it okay. because they're like sweet enough. Got it. Um, and can you tell us more about how you guys decided to start immigrant food? Yes. Very happy to share that. Um, so Immigrant Food was opened in November 2019, um, and it was started by my colleague Peter Schechter, who's also who's a size and Johns Hopkins alum. And um, you know, it's, there's just been so much political negative rhetoric around immigration, uh, where you know, to a point where immigrants have almost become you know the brown people in cages. And we wanted to do something against that new intolerance in America. 
um, other than you know writing op-eds or contributing to candidates we believe in. Um, but we wanted to open a, a restaurant um, that, that actually has a social mission. Uh, and why a restaurant is because Peter um, had been investing in restaurant his whole life. So he was one of the first investors of Jose Andres's restaurants. Um, he was actually part of the group that brought Jose, um, Jose Andres here to DC 25 years ago. Um, but Peter was also at the same time a political consultant. And so he wanted to bridge his two careers of like advocacy and, and, and politics with, um, with restaurants. And so that was the idea of immigrant food is a very different kind of business model of, um, of having you know, corporate social responsibility that doesn't just take part of the profits and donates it to a cause we believe in, which I think is wonderful and a lot of companies do that, but we wanted to do more than that and really integrate or bake in, to use sort of cooking terminology, bake in the cause of immigrants into, into the business itself. Um, and I'm, I'm more than happy to, to chat more about that, but um, I'm using harina de maíz. Is that the same thing as masa de harina de maíz? I had some trouble mixing the dough. But uh, which one? Harina de maíz? Maybe they do about maseca, maybe? The thing is, like, like I said, this recipe is mostly for that brand. I even, when I do my arepas at home, I don't do a recipe, I just eye it <laughs> because I eat like a regular thing, but uh, maybe you just need to add a little bit more flour or more uh, water, depending on how you are. You say that you have trouble mixing. Was it sticky or was it like hard? That's for Maggie. That's for Maggie, yeah. yeah perfect. And um, Kyla, hey. also, um, feel free to also like sign up for our newsletter, um, join our, um, our social media. Uh, we have a bunch of different initiatives that we're doing around immigrants as well. I used pan and the dough was still loose. Yeah, that's kind of weird because we use the same, but it's like I say, it's three quarters of a cup. So it's almost a cup, but not like the whole cup. And then a cup of water and a teaspoon of salt. And you need to really work on your dough. Okay. You need to give it time because that uh, you need to like really work on it. At the beginning, it's going to be like watery, but uh, then it's going to be perfect. Okay. Any more questions, guys? How was the arepa? Do you oh, like no. it? Delicious. Great. Abby, okay. have your arepa oh, already. Abby, that great. looks great. That looks great. Amy, we want to see yours Look, too. Look, Christy's making oh, one right that now. That looks good too, yeah. Amy's. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Any more questions, comments, guys? How was it? What did you struggle with the most? They are, they are, uh, they're eating. So yeah, I'll, I'll let so you guys, I'll let you guys do it. Like, okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> Everyone's just happy to be tasting it finally, I think. Well, thank you so much to both Tia and, and Chef Mele for doing this. We really appreciate you guys taking the time um, and we're excited to learn more about immigrant food. I hope everyone enjoyed all of their delicious treats. And again, um, I shared all of the social media handles for both immigrant food and for Johns Hopkins with all of you. So please make sure that if you post anything that you're tagging both of us so that we can see your beautiful creations. As I mentioned, this is just one of our early stops of this on the road with JHU series that we're doing. Um, this month in March, we're hitting up the Midwest section. So we actually have a politics of food Hopkins at home lecture coming up next week. We're gonna be doing a virtual Chicago architecture tour um, also in March, and we're actually going to wrap up the month of March with a pierogi class where you'll get to learn how to make three different types of pierogies, um, one classic, one Korean fusion, and one sweet. So I'll be sharing all of those information um, about those events with you guys in our follow-up emails. But again, we'd like to just thank you all for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.